everyone, hello. Uh, thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Uh, as you can tell, we're doing things a little bit differently due to the quarantine going on around the country. Um, we're doing our best to practice social distancing, and but that's not gonna stop us from doing the things we love, which is reviewing role-playing books. That's um, right. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna do a, 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 probably not a common one. Um, actually, I think I've only seen the book that you're about to show today at like, the indie section, at, at the role-playing indie section at, at cons. Uh, so what, what are we talking about today? Yeah, it is a little bit unusual. It's uh, Rutama, there it is. That is a Japanese game. Um, it's called the Natural Fantasy Role-Playing Game. The first thing to say about it is it's an absolutely gorgeous book. It is, it is a high quality hardcover. The binding's beautiful. It's got really thick paper. It's got just luscious, gorgeous illustrations all throughout uh, in a very gentle anime style. Um, okay. Like it looks like a, like a Studio Ghibli. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. I was just going to say Miyazaki, but Studio Ghibli. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, it is a it is a traditional role playing game in that you have a GM and you have a bunch of players, but it has um, several unique features to it. Um, okay. Personally, before you get started, kind of a session zero, like we were talking about before. The GM and the players create the world together. It has a very loose setting. You know, it's uh, kind of loosely um, idyllic um, medieval setting with um, with a Japanese okay. flavor, kind of like a kind of like a Miyazaki film, right? You know, okay. is it is it a lot like a record of uh, Lotus War, something like that, or uh, like medieval um, fantasy? Yeah, but much closer to a um, uh, much closer to a Miyazaki film. So Rick, okay. Record of Lotus War is, you know, really violent, high fantasy. Yeah. But this is more of a a gentle world. Um, and there are, there are a few things that it details about them, but it leaves all of the details blank. And at the beginning of the game. You have a world creation sheet, and you pass that around to the players, and they each uh, describe something about the world. You know, wow. they add a okay. little detail around it. And then when it comes back around, the GM takes that and fills in the gaps and makes the world. Okay. And you, you do this for towns and things as well. So it's, it's, um, it's kind of a creative creator creative process uh, but okay. uh, unlike a lot of unlike some other games that have that sort of um, cooperative creation this happens before the game so it doesn't really happen during the game it happens before the game when you're setting up what the world is like so that's that's nice. okay um, the main theme of the game is travel so it's um, the the um, <clears throat> one of the details of the world and this I really like, is that everybody at some point in their life has to take a pilgrimage or a journey somewhere. It doesn't have to be religious or anything. But it's kind of baked into the culture that at some point you will go on a journey somewhere. Um, hmm. Yeah, just to see the world. And everybody will do this. This is a very common thing. So much so that travelers are welcome in cities. You know, it, cities are used, and towns are used to travelers coming in, and they're treated well. Um, and when you go on this, uh, you go on these journeys, they usually s travel in small groups. And over time, it's been discovered that the best way to, to make a journey on a small group is have a, a small group of people from various different paths of life. Now, what I love about this is, the game setting, the game itself, has embraced the idea of the adventuring party. It's baked into the setting, which I think is fantastic. There, that doesn't happen nearly enough. Too many games just ignore the way that people are going to actually play. Right? Every, almost every 
role playing adventure session that you've had is <laughs> a motley crew of strangers get together and go somewhere. But so many games just ignore that. But this has it like built into the setting, which I like. So okay. traveling, traveling is very important. It's, it's, it's one of the main themes of the game. In fact, you get more experience points for traveling than you do for beating up monsters and things. There are monsters that you can beat up. Yeah, but traveling is very important. Um, there is a detailed resource management system. So you have to keep track of how much food you've got, how many supplies you've got, all of that sort of stuff uh, is very important. In fact, the players themselves have different roles. Uh, one's the, the, the map keeper, and it's his job to keep a map of where they're going. One guy's the, 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 the uh, you know, his job is to write down what happens in a travel log. And one guy's job is to um, keep track of their resources. So you have to, food's very important. Resource management's very important in this game. Uh, the other thing is um, that you have to, you have conditions, you have a condition, which means how well you're feeling that day. And you have to, you have to, you make a roll every morning to see how well you're feeling. So your hit points can fluctuate up and down depending on how well you're feeling. And this, this is influenced by how well you slept, what kind of food you have, so there's actually a, um, there's an in-game um, effect from sleeping in an inn and having a good food, having, having a good meal, which is, you know, which okay. is interesting, right? In D&D, &D, for instance, there's no, <laughs> mechan there's no mechanical effect between having a, you know, a three-course meal or having hard tack. <laughs> But in this, yeah, this game, true. there is. Yeah, you, heal, right? you heal the same way, no matter what. Yeah, exactly. But in this game, there's a difference between how well you, you slept and how well you've eaten. So it's, it's actually good for you to stay in an inn with good food and, and friends and drink. Um, okay. So, yeah. so does this have like a hit point system, um, armor it does. class? It, okay. it does have those sort of things. Like I said, it's, a, it's actually a very traditional role-playing game for most of it. You know, there's, you, have, you have classes and you have levels and you have a combat system and there's a magic system and all that stuff. It's just, um, it's geared towards travelers. It's, it's like uh, the Canterbury Tales role-playing game. <laughs> it, <laughs> except, except that everybody, one of the things I like about the game is it's focused on normal folk. You're, you're not wizards and fighters and paladins. and You're certainly not thieves. So you wouldn't go around telling anybody you're a thief. <laughs> you're okay. bakers. You're bakers and farmers and healers. It's a, you know, uh, and, and hunters. But, but those are like actual hunters who, you know, hunt deer and things. They're not, they're not Aragon-like rangers. <laughs> mm. um, so the, it's a very... It's a very story-centric sort of game. You're, you know, it's all about building the individual stories. You know, for instance, each character has at creation a personal item, which is just something that means something to them personally. It, you know, it doesn't even have to be a useful piece of equipment. It can be a, a doll or a, <clears throat> or a box or you know, a lucky bandana or something. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple other nice touches. There's a fumble mechanic, so you can, you know, you screw up, you roll really bad, you fumble. But when you do, everybody in the party gets a fumble point, <laughs> um, which a is a brown, point. yeah, a fumble point, which is a brownie point they can use later in the game to make things better for themselves. Hmm. Okay. So, so there's a there's a mechanical reward for for fumbling. Hmm. Um, so. You know, uh, and uh, magic in the system is very, very varied. Uh, very, uh, it's varied. It's uh, a lot less directly powerful. So there's no like fireballs and things. There are a lot of very creative spells. Uh, there's a there's a there's a spell to summon autumn leaves. Just lots and lots of autumn leaves. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> okay. And it's up to you to figure out how that's possibly going to be useful. Uh, there's, a, there's a spell to find people who are in love. 
you know. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, there are also spells to summon thunderstorms and you know control minds and that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of spells that are on the surface kind of useless. But it's up for yeah. you. You know, they're very they're very story driven spells. Um, okay. And uh, perhaps the weirdest thing about the game that takes a while to get used to is that the game master has a character. <laughs> the okay. game, ma- yeah, the game master actually plays a dragon. The dragons are very big in this system. <laughs> okay. uh, and and your job as the dragon is to kind of guide the party through a story because the dragons actually feed on stories. So you want to make a good story so you can write down. Um, so you're okay. kind of like, you're kind of like the, the little short DM in uh, the dungeon car- Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, right? You show up and okay, help the yeah. players do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you actually okay. have, you have powers. There, you, you have a set of powers that you can do, like at you know, low levels, you have levels. At low levels, you can, uh, you can let a character re-roll something that they just failed. At higher okay. levels, you can, you can, you know, physically intervene or bring people back from the dead or all sorts of crazy stuff. And um, you go up in levels by um, based on how many sessions you run because each session's a story. So. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, it had a lot of good things. Um, I, um, you know, the things I liked about it, I love the look of the game. Um, as I mentioned before, I love the fact that the, um, the actual idea of a party <laughs> is part of the part of the game. I think that's great. I love the fact that you're playing normal folk. I love the fact that you're, you can be a baker. <laughs> Who's my character? I'm Joe, <laughs> I'm Joe the farmer. I'm like, oh, okay, you're a farmer. That's great. I love the... I love the shared world building that in your session zero, where you go around and you talk about what it is. And I, and I, you know, the GM takes that and fills in the gaps. Um, hmm. Okay. I love the little details that they do include. Like um, there are these little shrines throughout the world um, on the side of the road and they're to help, help travelers. And each one's a little dragon and um, he's holding out his hand and sometimes he has a staff in his hand, like an actual staff, um, so that a traveler who needs a staff can take it and use it. And um, by tradition, if you come across a shrine that doesn't have a staff, you're supposed to leave your staff for the next guy. I don't know. I, okay. Yeah, I like that. that. That's the kind of world it is. Um, All right. There was one thing that I didn't like. There was one thing that I was disappointed by. Um, this is a game uh, with a very different focus than, than other fantasy role-playing games. Um, okay. it, it talks about, it says, it says that it invokes the traditional Japanese travel fable or story, which is great. Um, but it actually doesn't offer a lot, adv- a lot of advice on how to create a travel story. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not Japanese. I don't know Does it give, tradition. Does it give examples? Like uh, there, books or movies? Um, not as much as I would have liked. Um, you know, okay. there's, uh, there's one sample adventure, but it's more, the book includes lots of, um, Sheets, they're called like forms for you to fill out to help you do things. And so there's one called the scenario form. So you kind of fill out what's going to happen in the scenario. There's an example of that, but it doesn't, I just would have liked more advice on how to create a story like this. I mean, after 30 years of, of creating adventures where giant worms try to eat people and, and you've got to rescue the princess <laughs> from the trolls and there's a giant, you know, there's a giant laser wielding you know, dinosaur being written by a crazy wizard. How do you tell a, a gentler story based on travel? Um, mm. Now, th- there is a website, uh, and on the website, there's forums, and then they offer um, sample adventures there. But I just would have liked more in the book because it's such a departure 
from what you're normally telling games about, what you're normally writing games about, that I, I would have liked a little more help on how to create that sort of game. Hmm. But. Okay. It, it reminds me of, I don't think you've ever played this. If you have, let me know, uh, a game called Tokaido. Um, no? It's a... Uh, it's probably the most stress-free competitive game I've ever played where yeah. it's just, you just, you're, I believe you're in Japan. Um, and you just, uh, you're just walking. You're just walking to different destinations, get different points. Oh, is and... this the board game where you're taking the journey? Yeah. 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 I've heard of it. Okay. Yep. But I've never played it. I've always you know. wanted to. We, we should, we should do a segment on that. I think you will have fun playing that because it's, it's very different. It's very different from playing than, than, um, yeah. The games I play, I, I'm used to playing, um, but it sounds like this, this uh, the game that you're reviewing is um, sounds like it's meant for younger viewers. Is 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 learning the rules very difficult, in your opinion? Um, no, they're not a difficult set of rules. Although they were a little more extensive than I expected them to be. Um, hmm. Okay. What with all the different conditions and the resource management and things like that, but I wouldn't say it's meant for um, uh, younger players. I, it's not. It's not a, a kids game. It's an adult game. Um, it's okay. It's it's like Miyazaki films, right? Or you know, is is uh, are they meant for children? Well, I mean, some of them definitely are, but some of them, some of them aren't. Spirited yeah. away, you know. You know, spirited away is something that could happen in this game, in this world, although there's not much journey in there. But, you know, it's a lot like uh, The Hobbit or okay. the, the beginning of um, uh, The Lord of the Rings, like The Fellowship of the Rings, where the, the hobbits are traveling to Rivendell. And then even after that, where they're, after they, they travel from Rivendell to the, the breaking of the Fellowship, there's a lot of traveling. So, um, I mean... You know, there are definitely a lot of travel stories and and a lot of ways that you can tell those stories. I just would have liked a little more help in this book. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, would you would you ever uh, game master this? I think I will. I think I will. Um, you know, when I, I was I was really disappointed when I first read it. But then I read it again, and I was checking out some things on the website, and I thought, well, I'd really like to give this a try. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was actually hoping to be able to put together a, uh, a short convention-like game for, for some of the upcoming um, virtual conventions I'm going to. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, but I would, I would definitely like to try this out. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. It, you know, the illustrations are really nice. So okay. I would love to give it a shot. On, um, on a scale, How would you rate this book? Yeah, okay, 3 to 18. 3 to 18. I'd give this a Christmas score. Well, for now, I would give it a Christmas score of 14. I would okay. hope that um, when I played that game and see how it works, that could increase. But for now, I'd give it a 14. The big downside being I would have appreciated more, more advice on how to run the game. But being that it's such a, um, a, a unique theme and being that it's so different from other role-playing games, I feel like a little advice would have been helpful. Hmm. A little more advice. All right. So anyway, Excellent. there you are. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you for watching. Let us know if you've seen this. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And everyone, have a great and safe day.